Welcome back to Fortress Education, this is Zed. Today, we're going to be talking about Cassava Science, also going with the ticker as S-A-V-A. -A. Now, in this video, we're going to go towards due diligence, technical analysis, what I think about this one, institutional buyers, short interest, short flow, and everything in between. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So, Cassava. First off, they identify themselves as a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on neuroscience. They focus on key research and development in the first in-class medicines for people with debilitating neurodegenerative condition. In fact, our mission is to detect and treat Alzheimer's diseases. Now, for this one here, there is a presentation that was put up on July 29th, 2021 at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This makes it one of the most recent presentations that we have. And the title of this presentation is Encouraging Interim Results at Nine Months from an Open Label Study of Simufilum in Patients with Alzheimer's Diseases. So let's take a look into what's happening here. So first off, we have some disclosures relating towards the open label uh, being funded by Clinical Research Grant Award from the National Institute of Health, also known as NIH. And Simufilum is a proprietary drug candidate for ca of Cassava Science and some other things as well that we're not really interested in. So first off, Simufilum is an oral drug that targets altered filament A protein in the brain, restoring the normal shape of filament A block toxic signaling of soluble AB or A beta 42. We're conducting a multi-center one-year open study in subjects more than 150 people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's diseases with MMSE of greater than 16 and lower than 26. So the outcome measures safety, cognition or cognition, behavior, and CSF. So some of the term interim analysis, they conducted the interim analysis of the first 50 subjects who completed the nine months of open label treatment with semifilm 100 mg PID and the CSF biomakers were measured in a subset of subject N is around 25 after six months of open label treatment with semifilm. And we're going to just ditch a little bit of these presentations or these slides so this is here relating towards i believe the baselines for residuals um and we're going on a little bit further to no safety issues were found so semifilm was safe and well tolerated through nine months of open label treatment no drug related serious adverse events and non-persistent side effects commonly found in an elderly population observed with less than a 10 percent dropout rate so the summary of this nine months uh, open label semifilm basically was cognition scores improved significantly in patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer diseases after nine months of open label semifilm. Biomaker levels improved significantly. All patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer diseases after six months of open label semifilm and interim analysis are consistent with prior clinical results published in preclinical data and mechanism of action. The Alzheimer's is a progressive disease that worsens over time. Improvements in cognition, biomakers, and behavior in nine months suggest highly encouraging treatment effects. But what are the next steps? So the next steps include a 12 month interim analysis at the open label study, which is expected to occur on the quarter for 2021, which is the next quarter. A randomized and controlled trial with simufilum is currently recruiting more than 100 subjects with mild to moderate Alzheimer's diseases. A phase three of the program with simufilum is scheduled for initiation on fall 2021 with two randomized controlled trials at 12 months and 18 months. Total target enrollment is around 1700 or 1750 subjects with mild to moderate AD. So a quick thing here, the giving thanks, whatever. So we're going to ditch this quickly and go towards SEC filings and news. So one of the latest SEC filings is this one here. And it basically says that on June 15, 2021, the company went on for support for phase three program of semifilm in Alzheimer's disease pursuant to work orders to be issued by the MSA by mutational agreement in the parties. In addition to the June 18th, the company entered into two 
suit work orders with Premiere pursuant to the MSA for certain startup by services and subcontract pass through a total cost of $14 million to be built over the term of the work orders. So the reason why I'm showing you this one is just to keep in mind in relations towards all the costs. Now, in terms of this one here, it does talk relating towards the phase three clinical program in the Alzheimer's diseases with the selection of the premier research as CRO mark significant milestone uh, towards the initiation of that phase three. So having them completed over 250 clinical studies in neuroscience, they believe the Premier Research International understands how to conduct clinical studies in patients with Alzheimer's diseases, said the CEO. So this is a pivotal phase 3 program of semifilum. Just, that's just something to know there. Now, other SSC filings, we don't see much going on. But before moving on towards news, if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to click that subscribe button on the bottom right corner and leave notifications on. Also, don't forget to drop a like to this video. Also, if you would like to join our Discord, you can find it in the description below. There's a lot of people interested in SAVA at the current time on there, totally free. So let's take a look into some of the news. So on July 29th, Casava Sciences announces the positive cognition data with simufilum in Alzheimer's disease, and you're seeing that these results included cognition improved of three points of ADAS cognition at nine months with significant statistical uh, importance. Now, co cognitive improvements track with biomaker improvement and no behavior disorder in over 50 patients. Now, no safety issues were found and improvements in cognition, biomakers, and behavior suggest highly encouraging treatment effects. So, this basically, we talked a lot about everything in between for this PR, but we do have another one on July 29th as well. And this one says, Casava Science announces positive biomaker data with semifilum in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, very much almost exact same thing, but this one here says that the robust improvements seen in all measure biomaker of diseases and neurodegeneration and neuroinflammation and biomaker improvement track with cognitive improvements. And there was this uh, was referring to the oral presentation that we went over a bit ago. And the semifilum significantly improved the biomaker in Alzheimer's patients treated for six months. So all in all, really good news. Back on July 26, they also basically mentioned the randomized controlled phase 2B study of semifilum and shows that the, there is evidence of target engagement there. And it does show that semifilum 100 mg and 50 mg reduce plasma level to, of altered filament A in Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's patients around 48% and 44% respectively. Now, another one on 21st, we're talking about the phase three clinical program in Alzheimer's diseases that we just talked about in the SEC filing. And we did talk about the data release. This was back on June, 2021, talking about phase three program initiation remains on track for the second half of 2021, going back towards them announcing this person, Richard J. Berry, as um, to its board of directors. So who is this person? So they just mentioned that they're very pleased to add them as an independent director. Rick is highly respected and astute long-term investor. He offers broad significant insights around sustainability and governance framework. Commitment starts at the top with Rick's appointment. We wish to demonstrate that they are serious about the inclusion of sustainability, governance, and other societal goals as we continue to execute our stage or strategy to initiate phase three clinical program. So all good and good. This one here was a $2.7 million research grant given to them. So you get to see that there's millions of dollars being put back and forth. So before moving on towards institutions and short interest, let's take a quick look into money as it's very important for biopharmaceuticals. So first off, this is some of the quarters found on Yahoo News. They do report or do summarize these uh, earnings in a really nice fashion. So you get to see that the current adjusted EBI or just their EBIT is around, I would say negative 2 million uh, a quarter. Normalized income is somewhere closer to there as well. But let's take a look into the balance sheet. How much cash do they currently have but their total assets increased significantly as you get to see in quarter one we jumped from around 25 million in uh, 30th of september to 31st of december to 94 million to 31st of march sitting in around 284 million a lot of this is cash which really indicates one thing 
dilution and raising off shares. So keep in mind that that is a very common risk for pharmaceuticals. Currently, it's trading at 69.53, and you're able to see that for this stock, for the company, this was at some point around $8 not long time ago, early on in 2021. So going from $8 all the way to around 146, that's been a massive, significant push on this. And we're gonna discuss this at the very end. First off, institutional buyers. So institutional buyers remain a bit mixed towards this one. Some companies are adding, some companies are throwing out their shares or reducing their shares. But the majority of the action seems to be addition rather than omission or uh, basically giving out any of their shares that they have. In terms of insiders, we don't see much activity in terms of sales or buying. In terms of the short volume, you're able to see that this one here is stabilizing closer to 35 to 40 percent off short volume. Now, in terms of the short float, this appears to be around 11.8 percent of short float, meaning that there is significant short volume per day, but the short float is not highly shorted. This company has a short float or shares float, my bad, currently of around, let's say, 37 million. So only around, let's say, uh, closer to 4 million of that is shorted. So you get to see the numbers don't appear to be significant at a first glance. But let's talk about the technical analysis, as this seems to be an insane jump from $8 to $149 on the top. Or actually $146, uh, 146 as a 52-week high. Now to towards technical analysis. Now on the one month, one day perspective, and a lot of this technical analysis are going to show a little bit towards the bearish side because of this massive drop. Going on from almost $146.16 to $65 at the current level as the lowest and currently sitting at around $69.53. So on the moving averages, the 10 SMA is above the 30 main, so still bullish because of this massive strong bullish action that we've seen historically. The price point is below 50 SMA, so that's bearish, but above the 200 SMA at the 41.85 making it bullish. So you get to see it's a bit mixed. Now on the 80X, it's retracting to 45.94 from higher levels, almost at 59.35, uh, so it's not really significant to refer to this one, so we're going to skip 80X for today. William percent R shows it's significantly oversold. So what does that mean? There's mean it means that there's a lot more sellers than buyers for this one. So a lot of selling activity is happening, and this suggests that there might be actually some bounces here and there. In terms of the MACD, it's significantly going towards a negative reversal, as you get to see it flipped right away in a very strong manner, and momentum is at negative 27.47. Just out of retrospect, the day before, it was around negative 0.45. In terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow, that is retracting significantly. Now, the Bollinger Bands, here's where things get very interesting. The last time it touched the bottom of the Bollinger Bands, it bounced right back. You get to see that on the current level, with really nice volumes, the current Bollinger Bands is expected to trade at 137.13 at the top and around 66.86 on the bottom. So that should be your warning sign because you get to see that before or all, almost this move, the only times it really bounced backwards or only times uh, or the thing that happened when it touches the bottom of the Bollinger Bands is that it bounces back. But if it doesn't, it probably would break through and go to uh, lower lows than the $65 level. So be very careful to that. I think $65 is a very interesting level to be at. In terms of charting, so Fibonacci retracement is the first one because of high frequency traders and how they use it. So the first thing is that there is currently support at the $60. Above there, there's a resistance at $76.47, $92.94, $116.38, and $146.24. The other support levels are $39.63 and $670. On a price line action, we're able to see that there is a very strong support level at 66.13. Below there, 61.61. Below there, you're looking down towards 56.87. Going down towards 51.49. And then around 48.26. Going down to 43.74. 35.99. 31.25. 23.50. And 18.97. Following by that, 13.38. Significant resistances though, we're able to see a very strong resistance at 71.95, 77.98, 87.45, going up to 93.05, 99.08, 
going upwards to 10640 and going up to 11437 and then up to 12751 and 14616. In terms of analyst recommendations, currently the average price target is 131.25, showing an upside of around 88.77%. The last one was yesterday. This person reiterated a buy with a price target of $124. This person's success rate is 38% with an average return of 34%. Three days ago, another reiteration happened. A buy at $111. This person's success rate is 50% and average return of around 23%. Another one three days ago reiterated a buy. This person's success rate is 40% with an average return of 35%. And six days ago reiterated a buy with a price target of $190 with a success rate of 34% and an average return of 25%. I've set a question to Ed. What do you think about this one? Well, a company that really is jumping from 670 or even at bottom of around 163 back in the summer of 2020, all the way to a top of 150. That is insane. These returns are not really normal, but if they are actually in progress with showing this amazing Alzheimer news, I really hope, I really wish that they're able to put a really significant uh, impact or a dent on the treatments and the road to treating alzheimer's that's very very important for me but in terms of the current move the current push it seems that this is buy the rumors sell the news kind of situation and it will need some significant prs to push it back but for the current time being keep in mind on the bollinger bands if it does drop below there you might be a little bit in trouble but i think that this company might actually have a very strong chance to bouncing back a lot of people probably are looking into this bollinger bands and saying hey every time it touches the bottom of the bollinger bands it seems to kind of skyrocket upwards now there is exceptions where it did kind of slide downwards a little and then push forward but currently this is an uptrend that is meeting significant volatility as you get to see and you might expect for it to continue trading that way but the next PR coming in, if it's very bullish, you might see this one slingshot upwards because there's a lot of tension here. What do you think about this ticker? Make sure you mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one. Feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day.